Hi, this is John with The Evolving World. Today I'm doing a quick video on upgrading from a 12 volt lead acid battery to a lithium ion battery in my car. This is a Fiat 500E. The biggest lump of weight here. The only thing that really drags the whole car down is this old fashioned nasty old lead acid battery. So we're going to get rid of it and then in its place we're going to put this guy. Feather light little battery. Lithium ion phosphate. It's a 20 amp capacity so it's a little bit smaller than this one as far as capacity but if it was the same size as that one it would last about 10 times longer so I figure that if this one's made it four years this one should make it at least 13 and uh, if I got the same size they have these available in the same size as this one but the thing is if it lasts 10 times longer then we're talking 40 years here so that's probably a little bit longer than I'm going to keep the car so there's really no reason to to have it go that long and plus battery technology is going to change battery prices will come down etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. so I think this is going to be the best solution for the uh, for my uh, predicament here so uh, yeah let's get started so the first thing I'm doing here is I'm checking the voltage of the current battery it's actually 12.95 uh, volts which is actually pretty good and uh, the date stamp on it's actually if you can see that there's actually 4B Oh, 01 so I think that means 14 B usually means second month of the production so that would be February 01 so I think that's what that stands for so it's kind of interesting I think this is the original battery that came with the car so it's actually made it four years which is actually pretty good from what I'm hearing I'm hearing that these things only make it three years but obviously that's not always the case okay, so I got it connected to the uh voltmeter here and we got about 13.37 volts and that's coming straight out of the factory so that's good I won't have to charge it up or anything I heard that these things are supposed to ship at 50 percent but I, apparently that's not always the case because 12.8 is probably the nominal voltage I imagine and that it ranges anything from probably what 12 12 up to 14 or so so uh, I guess it's probably a little over 50 percent should be enough to start the car though no problem and the only other thing you're going to need is you're going to need these special little uh, clip things here that make it adjustable for a car battery. Because if you notice, these are actually just little M6 um, nuts right here. So we'll be taking these off and in, in its place we'll put this guy in. And so this is about $13 right here and this is a $290 battery. So the total, the total mod should be about $303. Okay, so here it is with the post adapters installed. Nice brass units to just go right in. You basically just uh, take these M6 nuts out, use a 5 millimeter Allen key hex wrench, and then just tighten these down and get it to about the time you get resistance and maybe just a little bit of a turn after that. Get them nice and snug, but don't over tighten. And that's pretty much it for the battery. The battery is ready to go, ready to install. I just weighed it. It's actually uh, 5 pounds and 15 ounces total. So, uh, it's a straight drop-in unit too. We're not going to be adding any other weight at all. So uh, yeah, just under six pounds. Pretty cool. Okay, so all you need is about a 10 millimeter wrench here to uh, take off the brackets and everything. All these nuts here are going to be 10 as well. So it's really all you're going to need to do this. Okay, so here's the comparison. As you can see, quite a bit different. Definitely a lot smaller but still not too small. You can see the connectors are going to be the same pretty much. Still should fit up pretty nicely. So this one 34 pounds. This one 6 pounds. I was actually expecting this to be high heavier. I was hearing it was closer to 38 or 40. So I'm kind of kind of surprised that it's actually only 34 pounds. So uh, it's only a 28 pound difference. But, I got some other ideas as far as that goes. So, here's kind of what it looks like. It's kind of interesting. It's always kind of interesting to see some of the details of a car from a different angle that you may never see before. So, the idea is here, as you can see there's a big battery tray. You know, for a big old battery. For a 34 pound battery. And, um, this is plastic. So, there's still some bolts in here and stuff, so I think I'm going to try to remove this tray 
and see what we can do about getting rid of some more weight out of here. Okay, so I took the battery tray out. That was about another one pound, 11 ounces with all the uh, fittings and everything. So this is what it looks like with it gone. You can kind of see some more stuff going on here. It's kind of interesting. There's all kinds of little piping and all kinds of devices that I have no idea what they are. Okay, so I think I have a nice solution here. You can see I have some tie straps that I've run through the some existing holes in the uh, some of the support brackets here. And then what I did is I had an old license plate that I uh, had no other use for, so I kept it. I have several of them actually. So it's kind of nice to be able to reuse it for some, some better purpose here. So it's nice never to throw things, certain, some things you just don't want to throw out, you know? <laughs> Find a use for it eventually. But I think this is going to work really nice. This only weighs about an ounce right here. So even with all this strapping and the, and the aluminum plate, we're still probably under six pounds for the new stuff. So we'll just put that in like that. And then this kind of fits nice and neatly right in here. I think um, if I just tighten down the straps, now add a couple more straps here, strap it down, I think that's going to do it. And then if it does tend to slide, I can probably put some more foam or something, some pipe foam, insulation foam or something like that around it. But it fits in here pretty nicely. So let's go ahead and strap it down. Okay, so here it is, all strapped down and everything. It's all pretty in there, pretty tight. Um, you just use some of these 8 inch uh, straps. You can get these from, uh, I got like a whole box of them. It's like Harbor Freight. You get like a, a whole bag of them, I guess. 100 piece. I think these were free actually from Harbor Freight. They have like their coupon special there thing, you know, every once in a while. If not, they're like a couple bucks for 100 packs, so pretty cheap. Either way. So interesting, I went to, I connected everything up here, and you might notice I got some wires here coming off of here. So I got it on my battery charger because the, uh, the battery went, despite it showing 13 volts, was not really, didn't have any capacity in it. Looks like we lost time, date, and then the uh, trip, the um, trip distance, trip A and trip B. I had, I had memory on trip B, so that's not here any longer. Other than that, I'm not sure if it, uh, See here if it changed any of this stuff. Obviously, it changed the time. Battery percent display, so that's still on. All door locks. I mean, I don't know if it if it just goes back to default. Maybe I'm not sure if. Um, Doesn't seem like it, it just lost a trip in the time. The units, system units, energy units. See if it remembered. Yeah, miles per kilowatt. This is how you change your, if you don't like the stupid mile per gallon E thing, which I hate because it has no relevance to anything. So I always set mine to miles per kilowatt. Okay, so yeah, it looks like it kept the settings, so that's good. A little progress report here. I only had it on the charger for about 10 minutes or so, then I switched over, I started, I plugged the car into the, the regular charger, level two charger. So it's charging up the car now. And um, so yeah, we're, it's putting out 14.6 right now at the battery. So it's charging it just like a gas car, like an alternator would charge a gas car. So I'm just gonna let it, I'm gonna let it charge at this, this uh, rate because it's probably better than just using a a car charger i mean it's, it's probably going to charge at the maximum rate that it can doing it this way as opposed to the other way i'm not exactly sure what the maximum is so i don't think i can charge as quickly so it's kind of interesting interesting i did that i guess the only thing to really note here is that when you do, do get this battery it is going to come basically depleted enough not to start the car so I don't know if it was down 50% or 30% or or whatever it was but it wasn't enough to get the car going okay to summarize everything it's about uh, 30 pounds off the front of the car battery sits a little bit lower than before 
although it is centrally located where it was before, so it's not, you know, it's not like we shifted the weight off to the side or anything. It's actually the same position, just about 30 pounds lighter in that position. And a little bit lower. And, uh, yeah, that was the primary objective. I figured that this battery will probably last, well, like I said before, 10 times as long, but it's only one-third the size. So if, if 4 years equals 40, divide that by 3, so maybe like 13 years or something like that. So it's nice that, you know, once you put this battery in, just like the lithium, the traction battery that's underneath the car, I mean, that powers the car, that's going to be there for 20 years, you know. You don't want to change that out every 5 years. So, you know, why why mess around with this nasty old lead, lead acid stuff? So... That really was the, the weakest link of the car, I believe. This old school battery here, nasty thing. I'm actually kind of surprised it went four years. I've heard that it was closer to three. That's what people were telling me. But uh, anyway, got four, but I, mean, I did actually I was not having any problems either. That's another thing too. I did this because I wanted to upgrade to the lithium. I didn't want to, I didn't want to wait any longer. And I do like the lightness of it. And then like I say, this thing, if this thing lasts 13 years, I'll be very, very happy not have to mess with it, not have to change the battery every four years. Because we don't know if this stuff will go up in value or up in price. We don't really know what's going to happen with this stuff. You know, lead might become more valuable at some point. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with this stuff. You know, right now that battery is probably $150, maybe $120, $100, or something like that. Or maybe even $99. I don't know. I mean, it's something like that. So it's just, it's just the time and the labor it takes. To, to swap a battery out, the inconvenience of having to go to the store and pick one up and swap out the old one, put the new one in. and So this should increase the reliability like to basically maintenance-free for the next 13 years because there's really nothing else that's going to need to be done. All right, that's going to do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed watching it. Hope you found it informative. And if so, please like and subscribe. Many more videos to come.